Okay, team, we're going to do some more fluency and assessment questions. And in any reading assessment, you're going to, you can assess reading in a whole bunch of ways. Two of the big types of assessments you would do, word recognition and fluency would help, would be a fluency thing. The last one would be more of a comprehension piece, but we'll save that for later on. And these, these fluent word recognition and fluency things usually like word recognitions would be words um, in isolation. So we'd have a list of words the students would read and you would test their word recognition by reading that word, a uh, list of words in isolation. And fluency would be some type of oral reading uh, assessment where we would have a student read a text and we would listen to see if they, what they do correct and, and where, they, where they make mistakes, okay? So these would be like two of the first types of assessments you would have in your reading assessment. And then obviously we do some comprehension stuff too. So these questions that we're gonna be doing are gonna involve different types of reading assessments and they're gonna focus on the fluency ones, okay? All right, let's take a look. The first one involves the scenario and I want you to take a moment. This is actually a setup for uh, several questions. It's three questions that use this scenario. So I know it's a long setup. Why don't you take uh, two minutes and read it to yourself, two or three minutes, read it to yourself, and then we'll talk about it, okay? This is the setup for the three questions. Read it to yourself, and then we'll talk. Go ahead now. Talk. Read it to yourself. There's a lot here. Let me point out a couple things. You notice that this is um, referencing a reading specialist, right? Specialist, right? Throughout this thing, there's reading specialists. Uh, and somehow I'm not seeing, oh, here we are. Here's specialist, right? This is clearly a reading specialist scenario. Yes. And, and, and it, it doesn't have to be a reading specialist scenario. It could have been a regular teacher, but these questions are, are geared more towards reading specialists. So, we are going to um, be doing some problems that are going to be a little harder. The expectation is going to be a little higher, right? Okay. And this reading specialist is working with fourth grade students. Let's circle fourth grade. So fourth grade, we're thinking fourth grade could easily be a comprehension assessment. It could be a fluency assessment. So fourth grade could be both. Okay. You're definitely working on fluency and comprehension. I'd say more comprehension than fluency, but you would definitely be coming across fluency. Absolutely. And we're still working on that. Doesn't go away. Still there. You're still working on that for a long time. So, okay. So it's a, it, and, and it's an oral reading, oral reading. So it tells us right here, it's fourth grade oral reading fluency. Okay. What else does it say? The teacher's looking at a couple things. So they're, they're looking at words correct per minute. They're looking at the student's uh, phrasing. Okay, so we, we talked about these elements before, the ability to string ideas together and stringing ideas together so that it's not choppy, right? We don't want them to be going word by word and, and haltingly choppy. And this is these are aspects that are gonna support prosody. So these are elements too. So we have a little bit of reading rate here. We have uh, prosody um, going on, right? We have, I'm sure there's something to do with accuracy here. Uh, Okay, so they're, 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 they say that they're going to give them a score, one through four. So, so let's make sure we get this right. Uh, one means that it is choppy, right? And four means that it's, it's, it's smooth. Is that right? Okay, so we have, we have, and then we have uh, the students, and the students have numbers, one through six. So we're going to look at these numbers here. One through six are the students. And we know that we know that in terms of prosody, choppiness, um, four is really good, and one and two is is low. Do you understand? So if we start to see the students scoring ones and twos, we know it's choppy. All right, read that one more time. I, I might have missed some things there. Read it one more time to yourself. Okay. And uh, okay, uh, unread and and let's look at these scores here. Uh, this is going to take you maybe two minutes to look over. So take a moment now, maybe one minute, just take a moment and read this over and then we'll talk about it before we go on. Go ahead.
So we have those two things here, words correct per minute. And then we have, and that's the, that's where they fall. Uh, this is, this is the scoring here. And then we have this, uh, well, this is the, this is what we're going to be grading the students on. And then we have a uh, prosody rate. Now I'm going to start with prosody rate. We said that a four is very smooth and a one is choppy. So just looking at these students here, student A, B, C, D, E, I'm seeing a lot of, are you seeing a lot of ones and twos? In fact, they're all ones and twos. So we know on this, this score of one through four, anything around a one or a two means that the student is choppy. Do you understand? That there's gaps in, in that proper speed, accuracy, and expression. There's gaps in, in, in uh, they're, they're stopping and, and working through the words, and there's a lot of choppiness. Okay, so we can see that just on this, this one right here. Okay, now let's look, look at correct words per minute. So let's just see now. Um, let me just draw a line. Okay. Um, if you're uh, above the line, you're in a good spot. If you're below the line, you still need, you, you still have a lot of work to do. And I think if we look at it like that, we can see a lot of students, in fact, all the students, all the students are below the line. Do you see that? Even that student there. So they're getting ones and twos, very choppy and prosody, and they're kind of below this marker here in this range right here, a lot of them are below the 120. They're definitely not at the 143. So there's still room to get improve. Uh, and that's still holding them back with um, words correct per minute. Okay, this is a lot of analysis. This is a big opening. Let's throw in our first question. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, no, there's more. <laughs> well, there's the big opening. <laughs> okay, everyone take another two minutes. <laughs> look at this look at this piece hey this is for reading specialists right so the question's got to be longer right take two minutes read uh read this read this piece again read this opening <clears throat> okay so this just reinforces what we said about prosody right we said one through four and we said one needs work and it says the words that give it away it's monotone little sense of uh, phrase boundaries. So they're, they're, they're going word by word. That's the, that's the big image I want you to think of. A one is going word by word. They're not, they're not speaking in phrases, very monotone. Let's just circle those things here. Or, or two is choppy. So we have these characteristics, choppy, word by word, monotone, not, not taking in phrases, yes? That's for students that are ones and twos. And we saw our students are ones and twos. And then we are, we already did the analysis of, of correct words per minute. Uh, we already spotted, um, we already spotted that these students here were all sort of um, you know, a little bit behind. Okay, they were a little, they were, they were, they were at that 50% range or below. Most of them were 50% or below. Okay. All right, so we have this 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 gauge for prosody, and we we know what to look for 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 gaps in prosody, right? For ones and twos. Okay. Now let's see. Is there another piece? This is the first question. <laughs> Take a minute. Read this to yourself. Go ahead. Unpause. According to the data in the chart, which of the following evidence-based practices is most likely to benefit all the students? Well, all the students are what? They're all getting ones and twos on prosody, meaning that they're choppy, monotone, word by word. And we have our friend, who's our friend? Whenever we see this choppy, monotone, word by word, we have our friend who? We have our friend phrases, right? Who got that right? It's B. Yes? Maybe? Okay. If you if you if you spotted those ones and twos, okay, in your mind you should be like it's choppy. Very choppy. All these things are going on here. 
So one way to fix that is to do phrasing. Now, what would not fix it? Decoding text with uh, uh, reading decodable text with corrective feedback, going back to decodable text and giving corrective feedback that that might make it harder, especially when you get to the upper grades. When you when you when you give corrective feedback in the moment, that can be very frustrating for the student. So you got to be careful of that one. Um, dividing multisyllabic words into recognizable parts. Um, so that would be more of a, a structural word analysis type of scenario, right? Uh, and that would be appropriate if that was the goal of the target words. Uh, I don't, I don't know if we have enough information to tell us on that, but I, I don't think that's that. It doesn't seem like it, it's not clear if it's a multi if if they're having issues with multisyllabic words in this text. So I'm going to cross that one off. Um, having them chart correct words per minute. I mean, this might be, this would be maybe motivating in some ways if the students are competitive. Uh, but, but again, we're seeing that they're really choppy. So we already have this strategy, okay, to help students string ideas together just to improve that piece, okay? And, and improving that piece is gonna help with that one aspect, which clearly, they need a lot of help with when you see that choppiness. Okay. You're not trying to make it perfect. You're just trying to string ideas together, that words together that they already know and build up that smoothness. Okay. Answers B uh, that comes from this test. This is our first one out of a series of three questions. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next question. All right, team, everyone take two minutes, read the question. It's from that same set of questions. We've already looked at with the same set of questions. We looked at these students and we saw that there was uh, lots of ones and twos with prosody, so very choppy. And then we also saw that, you know, they're they're hovering around that 50, 50 percentile range or, or a little bit lower with correct words per minute, okay? So now we're going to that second question in this set, this one right here. Take two minutes on your own, read it to yourself, go. This one right here, the reading specialists, uh, they look at some of the students and they, they notice in looking at the errors of these particular students here, okay? Uh, they notice that the student is having difficulty with words like rowdy, grouchy, and release. Is that right? So let's just look at this and, and let's just see here uh, what is going on with these words here. Rowdy. Well, rowdy, they say rudy, right? It has an ow in it. And what's ow? Ow, notice my tongue, my throat, my jaw moves. Ow is a diphthong, right? That's a diphthong. A diphthong is when two things blended together. We get two, we have a ow, we have a movement in the tongue, throat, and jaw. That's a diphthong. Gra ouchy, another diphthong is there. Release, re, uh, lease. Okay, so there's a, a vowel diagram. E, e, I think that's a vowel diagram. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some Diphthongs, ow and rowdy and ow and grouch and e diagraph in release that they would need help with. Can you spot that? Do you, do you see that in these here, these words? Which of the following evidence-based strategies would be most likely involved in, in most likely improve these students' automatic word recognition and their overall reading fluency rate? So what's going to help them? Is this something where we do morphemic analysis? Nice vocab word. But we're really not dealing with words with morphemes in them. Remember, a morpheme is the smallest part of a word that carries meaning. Like the word, uh, uh, let's say, uh, ships. I was going to say cats. Right? Cats has two morphemes. It has a base word and a, and a suffix. These words here, they don't have morphemes outside of the base word, right? They're really not great words to do morphemic analysis like replay, 
you know, prefix uh, base word, you know, so, so not really. It's not going to help them with their fluency. How about this one right here? Practice words uh, that end in a final uh, stable syllable. Now we're not we're not really we're not really doing that, and I think actually they did pretty good with the with the end of a lot of these words. Yeah, so that's so yeah, so we're not we're not doing a final stable syllable. How about this one right here? Practice echoing the teacher's um, modeled fluent reading of a text. Is it would that help? No, this student here, they need specific phonics help with uh, specific vowel diagraphs and diphthongs. Can you see that? They need that. That needs to be, that's a gap that needs to be clarified. How about D? Practice sorting and reading words containing vowel teams. Okay, vowel teams. And I guess that would also, I guess they're saying here that it's going to include things like, you know, uh, vowel diagraphs and, and diphthongs. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay, so they need some help with diagraphs and diphthongs and going through some of those 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 vowel patterns. All right, team, this is a good one. It's part of that one right here. You will see on your test questions that are strung together. Usually those questions have sort of a large opening, lots of setup going on, and then you actually get into the question piece. So so make sure that you you factor that in. All right, the answer here, you want to spot that this is something to do with phonics. And as soon as you can spot that, you'll be able to get to the right answer, okay? Uh, the answer here is D. And we get review of all these ideas. It's from that reading specialist test. Now let's go to the third one in this set, the third and final one in this set. Um, everyone, I want you to take two minutes and I want you to read the question, okay? Two minutes on your own, go. Run pause. Uh, it says here the prosody rating descriptions in the chart on the assessment convey the reciprocal relationship between the prosody component of fluency and reading comprehension, primarily because the descriptions. Okay, so do me a favor. Read over the descriptions here of a one and read over the description of a four. Now I know these are describing where they are with prosody. But we're also trying to make the connection between how does prosody improve comprehension. So pause me. Unpause. A student that's getting a prosody uh, rating of a one, they're monotone. They're not doing any type of phrasing. Uh, they are uh, not taking into account punctuation. And basically, it's losing. Uh, they're losing a lot of the meaning in the sentence, right? Whereas a student that is is speaking with prosody, they they have good phrasing, uh, and that they're 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 attending to units, so they're reading in phrases, so they're reading the whole independent clause, the complete sentence. Um, they're taking into account punctuation and stress marks that that um, indicate something, right? And they're taking into account the author's punctuation, so they're 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 getting these elements that are in the writing. So, so this is going to lead them to understanding it more. Does that make sense? And they're they're adding in that expressive uh, element to it, right? So they're they're un, they're they're getting that piece of what the author is trying to say by adding in by expressing it in their emotions. So it's not like they're reading to be or not to be. It's to be or not to be, right? They're, they've got that element there. So they're, they're understanding it possibly a little bit more. Okay. So the difference between this and this and how it helps with comprehension. Uh, is it A, uh, indicate the qualitative aspects of fluency that encompass how smooth the reader sounds overall when uh, engaging in oral reading? qualitative that's really good this is um um <clears throat> it is qual this is a qualitative analysis with the description it's also quantitative with the number it's not really what we're doing right now we're not doing that we're not doing those type i mean we are doing an assessment which is both qualitative uh uh with the description and quantitative with the number but we're not that's not really that's not really 
the piece here, okay? Uh, explain how a reader's background knowledge, again, it's not background knowledge, right? But it's true. Background knowledge can affect both the, uh, can affect the readers, uh, both their oral reading fluency and comprehension. That's true. But, but we know nothing about their background knowledge on these texts, right? So this isn't something where, where we're told that they had no background knowledge on. So, so we cross that one off, right? Focus on high level of oral reading. Um, focus on a high level of oral reading fluency can free up a re readers' cognitive uh, resources to devote into comprehension. That's a true statement. It's true that uh, students with a high degree of fluency can focus on comprehension, but that's not the purpose either. Okay, so let's read over the answer. Connect a reader's phrasing, stress, and intonation to the ability to interpret the meaning of the text being read. Doesn't that make more sense? So what this is doing is it's helping the teacher spot breakdowns in phrasing and prosody with stress and intonation. And, and they could fix that. And by fixing those things or improving those things, that's going to help the student have more control as they read, like they're driving a car, more control to interpret the meaning of the text that's being read. So when they are able to pronounce those words with the proper speed, accuracy, and expression or intonation and include all the, the elements of, of prosody, okay, they're going to be able to understand the text uh, and more, and that's going to lead to comprehension. Good question. Okay, now I know this was a, a, a long set of questions. You may want to go back and just read this again. Start with the prompt. Go through uh, what the scores are. Okay, you can read over this rubric here again, and then just for yourself, just as a just for practice, just go through those questions again. One, uh, question one, um, question two, question three. Okay, this one was the last one. Twenty six was from that reading specialist test. The answer was D. Uh, you get to uh, making connection between the the fluency and comprehension. And, and you're going to remember this stuff about qualitative and quantitative. Qualitative is when we give examples of something. Quantitative is when we give a number. So this, uh, this type of assessment here is, um, it's both qualitative, quantitative, they're adding numbers, and it's also qualitative, they're adding descriptions. Okay, you may have to review those a little bit more, but, but that's, that's in here as well, okay? All right, let's keep going, team. You're doing great. We're almost done with fluency. Just a few more questions, okay?